and stayed at home. Beneficiaries of Anambra One Youth Two Skills Initiative commend Governor Saludo. ECOWAS expressed his concern over hunger situation in West Africa. Cyclone Mocha nears Myanmar, Bangladesh, with 6 million people in its path. And before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening and welcome to the news tonight. My name is Maureen Stone in UK. The Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 13, Mr. Tony Olofu, says Nigerian police force is winning the war against insecurity in the zone. Mr. Olofu said that this during his one-day working visit to the Enugu State Governor, Ifani Ugwani and Enugu State Police Command. Correspondent Chibuzo Obideke filed the report taken from here. Mr. Olofu, who on arrival was received by the management team of Enugu State Police Command, led by Enugu State Police Commissioner Mr. Ahmed Amani, immediately held an interactive session with senior officers of the command to develop more tactical and strategic plans to end insecurity in the region. Mr. Olofu recently took over from Mr. Abutu Yaro to become the sixth Zonal AIG of Zone 13 since its establishment in Ubo, Anambra State. In an interview with journalists shortly after visit the new AIG assured the people of Anambra and Enugu states of his readiness to combat criminality in the zone he called for cooperation from members of the public as he promised to put in his best in the fight against armed robbers kidnappers incessant sit-at-home order and other criminalities he thanked the Enugu state governor for his hospitality and commitment to security of life and property in the state and assured him that the zone and the two commands under its jurisdiction will continue to work in synergy with the government of Enugu and Anambra states for effective operationalization of community policing to ensure minimal crimes in the area. We can only assure members of the public uh, to continue to support us so that we provide uh, the required security for their safety. Uh, this is uh, a continuous thing. It didn't start just one day, so it takes a little time, but notwithstanding we will definitely overcome in the aig's entourage we are the commissioner of police enugu state command mr ahmed amani the deputy commissioner of police admin zone 13 mr ikioye orutugu deputy commissioner of police in charge of zonal cid ahmed umaru his counterpart in charge of operations zone 13 ibrahim gutang among many others the member representing Nikoka 2 constituency dr p tibida has been elected the majority leader of a number of state House of Assembly by the lawmakers of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA. Other principal officers elected by the lawmakers include Honorable Beverly Nkemdiche Ibazu, representing Onisha South to constituency as the Chief Whip, Honorable Ifani, Chief, Honorable Ifani Chief, representing Idemili North constituency as the Deputy Chief Whip of the House. Their elevation to principal positions was announced by the Speaker of the Anambra State House of Assembly, Honor Right Honorable Uche Okafo, during plenary yesterday. Correspondent Chukwemeka Modelim has the details. In his speech, the new majority leader who spoke on behalf of others, Dr. Ibida, explained that their elections were necessitated by the vacuum created by the death of the former majority leader of the House, the late Dr. Nnamdi Okafo, who died in South Africa last year while on official duty. Dr. Ibida assured that they will discharge their duties creditably and live up to expectations. This is a responsibility which we must live up to. And I want to assure my revered speaker and very dear colleagues that we will live up to the expectations, up to the responsibilities bequeathed on us today. Also at the plenary, the House passed a resolution commending Governor Chukwu Masoludo security agencies and Ambra State vigilante groups for their relentless efforts in keeping Anambra State safe. The resolution was sequel to a motion of urgent public importance sponsored to that effect by the minority leader of the House, Honorable Onyebuchi Ofo 
he informed the house that the dreaded Odumodu, a leader of a criminal gang operating from Imo State into Anambra State, was killed a few days ago by Anambra State security forces with four others at Amaruru, a boundary between Imo and Anambra States, and appreciated Governor Soludo and security agencies for achieving a great feat in security. This our governor is working security-wise. I myself am pleased. As the chairman of the committee on security, I am very pleased to say that our governor is very security wise. In their separate speeches, the majority leader, Dr. Ibida, the deputy majority leader, Sir Emeka Afoka, the member representing Obarutu constituency, Sir Somto Chuku Udeze, observed that Governor Saludo and security agencies have made Anambra a livable and secure state by arresting insecurity that ravaged the state in the past. Others who commended the governor, the state commissioner of police, Mr. Echeng Echeng, and other security agencies for restoration of adequate security network to the state where Honorable Uzoma Eli, representing Onisha South One constituency, the deputy chief whip of the house, Honorable Ifan Yichieku, and the member representing Anocha Two constituency, Honorable AGK Okechuku, speaker of the house, Right Honorable Okafor, also urged Ndianambra to always complement government's efforts towards protection of lives and property and provision of more infrastructure in the state by paying their taxes and levies promptly. Be eager for results that Anambra State Assembly commends Mr. Governor Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, the state security agencies, that is the police, military, DSS, civil defense, immigration, and the Anambra State Vigilante Service for their relentless efforts in keeping Anambra safe. From the State House of Assembly, Chukwe Meka Mordelim, ABS News. Chinese and the one youth to skills program of Anambra State Government have applauded Governor Chukuma Stoludo for the initiative. The trainees made this known at the various local government areas visited by the Commissioner for Youth Development, Mr. Patrick Aramba. During his routine monitoring and inspection of training centers and development institutes for batch A stream one pilot phase. Correspondent Blessing Uchendo has the details. Local government areas visited include Oka North, Oyi, Ayamelum, Onicha North and South, Obaro, and Anambra East and West. In his remarks, the Commissioner Mr. Aramba explained that the ongoing inspection was to ensure effective policy and program implementation, adding that One Youth Two Skills Initiative is not a settlement project, rather a development project to make the youths smart entrepreneurs in order to achieve the vision of making the state livable and prosperous. He equally noted that the program comes in five stages which include apprenticeship, entrepreneurship, cooperative, business financing and mentoring stage even as he encouraged them to put in their best which in return will make them independent in the nearest future. We're taking it very seriously monitor and evaluate what we are doing. Glory of God we are working around the clock. We are working 24 by 7 some facilitators at the centers, Mr. Henry Agnobi, Reverend Azoka Chukwano, Mr. Chike Ebuna, Dr. Peter Okafo, and Sir Francis Oranguba informed the commissioner that the trainees are making appreciable efforts in their areas of interest and also commended Governor Saludo's administration for using the initiative to reduce youth restiveness. On his part, the Transition Committee Chairman of Obaru Council Area, Mr. Pascal Aniebuna, commended the youth friendly administration of Professor Soludo and urged the youths to hold on to having at least two skills to help them achieve great goals in life. If the government can in there, make through him, let them do you to know. Or if they need one way, go in there, man on you for that is your eye. Speaking, some of the trainees, Chinonye Okoye from Umoba Nam, Uche Nawafo from Nsube, Chukwe Buka Nzehu from Onicha, Victuzo from Atani, Flora Nwabuwane and Philomena Udaka, among others, said it was their first time of experiencing such empowerment, noting that Governor Chukwe Masoludo has given Anambra youth a great platform to excel. They noted that the training has rekindled their hope for a better future, even as they commended 
highlighted the quality of training at the centers and promised to come out better after the program. Say thank you for this great opportunity even to us to participate in this one new two skills program. And this is a very educative program. We learn a lot. In fact, we are happy to be one of them. Blessing Uchendo, ABS News. The Anambra State Head of Service, Barista Fidela Igwebe, has charged the leadership of labor unions to support government's agenda to enhance rapid develop actualization of planned workers' welfare packages. Barista Igwebe made a call during the State Joint Public Service Negotiating Council's SJPSNC meeting held at the committee hall of the Office of the Head of Service, Oka. The head of service, who is also the chairman of the State Joint Public Service Negotiating Council, called on the labor leaders to work as a team with the present administration to tackle challenges faced by workers which, have presented, which they have presented to her office at different occasions and restated that her commitment towards promoting transparency, accountability, and efficiency in the civil service. She highlighted issues like the review of the pension law and assured the labor leaders that not a penny of the contributed pensions of the state's workers would be lost to the pension funds administrators having consulted widely on the issue. The HOS also assured them that the government and states started to contribute its 10% counterpart fund to the pension scheme from the inception of Governor Chukuma Saludo's administration and equally reassured workers that the three months deductions from workers' salaries for recapitalization of the Ndiolo Microfinance Bank has been deliberated upon, and in the case the planned recapitalization fails, the monies would be refunded to the workers. Barista Igwebe assured the labor leaders that the administration of Governor Charles Soludo remains committed to solving the workers' housing problems through accessing the federal mortgage funds and affirmed that the workers of the defunct Anambra Water Corporation Board were not left out in the government's plan, affirming that they would receive their entitlements following the out-of-court settlement that has been embarked upon. She also explained her efforts towards bringing workers' promotion up to date as a way of correcting the anomaly she met on ground at the inception of office and advised the labor leaders to always ensure they pass through proper channels when any need arises. Responding, the Vice Chairman, JNC, representing the Trade Union Congress, Comrade Edith Omuka, expressed satisfaction with the efforts of the government in solving the matters raised by workers in the state and commended the Head of Service for Restoring Unity in the JNC and Governor Soludo for being responsive to the yearnings of the people. The Association of Community Pharmacists of Nigeria, ACPN, an ambassador branch, has held its 32nd annual conference. The conference, which held in Oka, had as theme, From Crisis to Preparedness, Future of Community Pharmacy Practice in Anambra State. The event brought together pharmacists, healthcare professionals, industry experts, and stakeholders from across the country, including Senator Uche Ekunife. Onye Agubeze has the details. Then a professional body dedicated to advancing community pharmacy practice in Nigeria, especially in Anambra State, convened this year's conference to address the challenges faced by community pharmacists during crisis and explore strategies to enhance preparedness for the future. In his welcome address, the state chairman of ACPN, pharmacist Henry Ilo, while thanking all who graced the event, emphasized the importance of community pharmacists in providing accessible health care services particularly during challenging times. Pharmacist Ilo stated that the theme of this year's conference aptly captures the evolving role of community pharmacists as essential healthcare providers and aims to equip pharmacists with the necessary tools and knowledge to navigate crisis effectively and ensure better preparedness for future challenges. It's a very big challenge and I hope that this conference will help us to chat a way forward to move out of this particular problem we have and sanitize the pharma space in an umbrella because once it's sanitized, there will be a healthier society. On her part, the planning committee chairman of the conference, pharmacist Choma Chikewangwo, said that despite the constant involvement of the ward and the challenges that comes with time, the collective efforts and hard work of the community pharmacists have always helped in overcoming the challenges. We have been able to scale up the number of pharmacists 
scale through all these crises. We also look forward to the future with enthusiasm and excitement. Please, I welcome you all once again. In his remark, the national chairman of the ACPN, pharmacist Adewale Oladibolu, congratulated the Anambra State branch for their achievements so far, as he noted that despite the crisis that come, what matters is the ability to find a way forward. In his keynote address, a former Director General Standard Organization of Nigeria, SON, Dr. Ikem Odumodu, said that community pharmacists play a crucial role in ensuring the safe and effective use of medications within their communities, and are also also healthcare professionals who are licensed to dispense medications, provide medication counseling, and offer a range of pharmaceutical services to the public. One thing I'd like to assure you, we must realize that if we do not do anything, if we continue as usual, it will lead us to the very the event showcased a diverse range of engaging sessions, interactive workshops, and networking opportunities. In Oka, I am Onyinye Agubeze reporting for ABS News. President of the ECOWAS Commission, Omar Tori, has presented the Commission's work plan for the year 2023 to the ECOWAS Parliament at the ongoing first ordinary session of the Parliament holding in Abuja, touching on myriad of problems confronting the community. Article 32 of the Supplementary Act Enhancing Powers of the ECOWAS Parliament mandates the President of the ECOWAS Commission to present a general report on the state of implementation of the community's work plan twice a year. Princess Ekwi Ajide reports from Abuja. Presenting the first community report for the year under review, Tore counted activities undertaken by the Commission to ensure growth in the sub-region to include improving economic and monetary union, deploying the right infrastructure to address deficit in the community, and building bridges and connections necessary for the socioeconomic integration of the region and improvement in the well-being of its people. He also counted investment in human capital development in the community, providing in humanitarian assistance to citizens that are victims of both man-made and natural disasters, promoting gender equality and supporting development and youth empowerment, among others, are some of the Commission's efforts. The President, however, raised concern for about 29.5 million people that need emergency food and nutritional assistance, notwithstanding the good production of food, saying that if appropriate measures are not taken, the figure could rise to 42.5 million people between June and August 2023. Turning to the economic affairs, it should be noted that while the commitment of member states towards economic union remains strong, a number of challenges continue to inhibit the region's performance in terms of macroeconomic convergence. This report was followed by reactions from parliamentarians who commended, played, or made suggestions on the way forward. Honorable Melvin Snow called for more efforts in the push for elimination of drug abuse in the region. In her response to some of the issues raised by parliamentarians, the vice president of the ECOWAS Commission, Mrs. Damtin Saishibida, helped on the need for member states to work together for effective regional integration. It is important that we get together amongst ourselves and uh, and you know find areas of collaboration to work together in order to break down those uh, barriers and also to you know together to implement this vision of uh, regional integration the 2023 first ordinary session of the ECOWAS parliament continues till the 26th of this month in Abuja princess Ekwi Ajide reporting Thousands of people in Myanmar and Bangladesh are evacuating residents ahead of Cyclone Mocha, which is expected to bring winds as fast as 75 kilometers an hour when it makes land fall. According to reports, the storm is currently in the Bay of Bengal and moving northwards. It is expected to cross the coast between Sitwe in Myanmar's northwestern Rakhine state and Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh at around 12.30 p.m., that is 6.00 GMT on Sunday. Authorities have warned of the dangers of flooding, landslides, and a storm surge of between 2 and 2.7 meters, 6.6 .6 feet to 8.9 feet. This is the fourth cyclone to threaten Myanmar this monsoon season, and there are grave concerns about the impact 
especially on already vulnerable and displaced communities, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, Onocha, said in an update on Friday. It noted that more than 230,000 people in Rakhine are living in camps for displaced people, located in low-lying coastal areas susceptible to storm surge. About 6 million people in areas in the path of the storm Rakhine and the three northwestern states of Chin, Magwe, and Sangai were already in need of humanitarian assistance, Unocha added. Yakubu Meilaifa, the Vice President of Nigeria Squash Federation NSF, on Saturday applauded the dedication and consistency of Lagos State towards the development and promotion of squash in Nigeria. He gave the commendation in an interview with the News Agency of Nigeria, NAN, at the Molade Okoya Thomas Indoor Hall at the Teslim Balogun Stadium, Suruleri. Belaifa, a chief superintendent of police, told Newsman that since that last squash classics in 2018, there had been significant improvement from the previous edition. He also observed that there was need to get the players acquainted with the use of the glass court to be at par with their foreign counterparts. The Lagos Squash Classics was put together by the Lagos State Squash Association, led by Tommy Falashe, in partnership with Premier Lutu Babai Jabu. Sharing same views was Adebiyi Mabadeje, the chairman of Old Trafford Squash Club, who commended the efforts of the players for making it to the quarterfinals. Remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS by liking our Facebook page at ABS Television Oka. Subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash ABS Television Oka. Like us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. And you can also log on to our website www.absradiotv.com. And now a recap of the main points before we go. AIG's on 13 Olofu has pledged to end state at home. Beneficiaries of Anambra One Youth Two Skills Initiative has commended Governor Soludo. ECOWAS has expressed concern over hunger situation in West Africa. And on the foreign scenes, Cyclone Mocha has neared Myanmar, Bangladesh with 6 million people in its path. And here is a special message before we go. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that does it on the news tonight. My name is Maureen Stone Enujoke. Thank you so very immensely for watching. Good night and stay blessed.